the large Sun Temple near Majorville in Alberta has ball, has uh, golden eagles flying over it, and this is one such magnificent bird. I'm going to tell you that and show you that hills, the shapes of hills were modified by moving dirt. I'm going to show you examples of what the hills look like now and then later I will show you aerial photographs that demonstrate where they moved the earth from and where they moved it to. As you approach the Sun Temple from the north, when you're about 12 kilometers away, the Sun Cairn Hill sort of grows out of the horizon. And to me, this looks like an eagle soaring directly at me. And that's not one hill, that's three hills have been built up in such a way to give this perspective. This hill has been increased in height and I'll show you where and why. This is a flat top hill, it's about 300 meters across. All the stones have been removed from it except for a few small cairns and lines of stones. And I think that it was flattened by moving dirt. About 400 meters southwest of the Sun Cairn Hill is another hill with a cairn on it that lines up between this Sun Cairn and that Sun Cairn, and I call that the Tertiary Cairn and the Tertiary Cairn Hill. So there's three hills make up this eagle that looks like it's soaring towards anybody who's looking at it from this direction. And the curious thing is when I tell the rancher out there who owns the land that that's what it looks like, it, it switches his mind. He sees an eagle there all the time now too. More evidence that people move dirt to change the shape of hills. This is the secondary cairn, three quarters of a mile, 1,250 meters from the main cairn, which is, this is a GPS number 11 prime. Whenever you're coming down a slope towards another significant rock, the slope tends to level off. So here's another rock, it tends to level off. Coming down here, this is the V rocks, 107, it comes down and level off. So it levels off, it gets to the, ro the rock and then it gets steeper again. Comes to another rock, significant rock, it's part of the calendar, and then gets deep again. This is part of the calendar, and then it gets deep again. Well, they did all that by moving dirt to make the increased slope and then the level. If you take an aerial photograph, you can tend to see where they moved, because where they moved dirt from, the vegetation is changed. If you see a plowed field, formerly plowed field, that it was allowed to go back to prairie, what grows on it isn't like undisturbed sod. I mean, it, it just looks different. So dirt was moved from here to here, was moved from here to here, was moved from here to here, was moved from here to here. And you can see how this, this is a V rocks. You can see how this was built up. And you can't see it quite as clearly but this was also built up. This is the Sun Cairn Ring. Well, that was the example of where they moved the dirt. This is not a clear diagram, but it's an aerial view of the whole hilltop. And I have shaded in areas where they moved the dirt and put arrows into the direction that they moved it. So what I was showing you before is that they move dirt here, 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 and they move dirt that way and that way. All of these shaded areas, they move dirt from down south into there.
That's for the Sun Karen Ring Hill. Secondary Sun Karen Hill. This is an aerial photograph. And you can see the different vegetation that they moved from here to here, and from here to here, and they've moved from there to there. But it turns out that with the false color aerial photograph, this same photograph, but scanned to give false color, it's more clear. This is false color, but the yellow parts is where they moved the dirt from, to the blue parts. So they moved here, they moved here, and so on. This is another aerial view. This is one of the times the flying cowboy took me out on a reconnaissance trip. They moved dirt from here to here. This is a long channel that goes out here about 200 meters. They moved it this way and this way. And they moved here and here. I'll give you the false color version of that. They moved the dirt from the yellow to the blue. So they moved this way, this way, this way, this way. This is the secondary sun cairn. This is the east house. This is 50 meters east of that sun cairn. One last of these aerial photographs. I like them. I don't know whether anybody else does. But they moved it from the yellow to the brown. And the false color shows it most clearly. This is the secondary sun cairn. This is the north house, the east house. There is a knob that is part of the solar calendar to the north-northwest, and there are two uh, more rocks part of the solar calendar. They moved dirt here, here, and they moved dirt up onto this knob as well. So I'll show you an aerial photograph of that zone. This is the secondary sun cairn. And all this hatched part is where they move dirt, and the arrows show you the direction that they move the dirt. There's this long ridge down here, and there's a line of rocks coming down that ridge. I still haven't discovered the reason for this line, because the direction doesn't seem to fit anything. But there's worked there for another two or three generations of interested people. But north of the secondary sun cairn, there's a crescent moon. And a little bit off of it, it's too small to see there, there is a morning star. So we have a sun, moon, and morning star on the secondary hill. They are north. On the main hill, there are, these things are much bigger. And the moon and morning star are on the southwest. That probably means something, I don't know what. And this is the north-northwest knoll with the two rocks that I showing, pointed out. And uh, this is part of the solar calendar as well. The three main hills were the Sun Cairn Ring Hill, the secondary Sun Cairn Hill, and the third one, the hill of equal height, was the Solstice Cairn Hill. This is the view of it. This cairn here that you can hardly see, maybe in the camera you can't see it at all, it's about two meters across, has been used as a backsite for the summer solstice sunrise for 5,200 years. On the main cairn hill, there are rocks spaced every roughly four or five hundred years that show they, they didn't move an alignment rock to correct the, the shifted position of the sunrise. I guess a rock, once it's placed, is sacred. So they put another rock and another rock and another rock. So this is one of the rare sites, if there is another site, where you have 5,000 years of history recorded in stone. They didn't move too much dirt. This hill must have been 
the first one, <laughs> this must have been the highest, and they didn't move much dirt at all. So they made the other two hills, this is my guess, equal to this height, because they're all 919 plus or minus one meter above mean sea level. This is astonishing when you think that these people didn't have a GPS or I don't know how they did it, by aligning with the horizon, I guess. Well, just to show you, I showed you the Sun Karen Ring Hill viewed from there and how the change of slope, it's steep after the rock and then flat to the next rock, steep after that rock, flat to the next rock. This is on the main hill looking southwest. You see how symmetrical this hill is. And they moved dirt from that part. They moved dirt. You can't see the north-northwest uh, No, but it's there. So they moved dirt around here. The Solstice Hill is hidden by another hill in front of it. So you can only see the peak of it. Genius existed on the prairie 5,000 years ago, and not only mental genius, but physical genius to change the shape of the ground. <laughs>